When PS5 Pro was announced, various press went on a mission to build a PC with similar specs at a price point not a million miles away from the Pro's $700. Well, back then I anticipated that a GPU similar to a downclocked RTX 4070 is probably the closest GPU you could get, but that was before RDNA 4, before the 9060 XT and, to be fair, before the 5060 Ti. Both of these cards are pretty good at achieving Pro-like performance levels, sometimes with overhead to spare. Here's Black Myth Wukong, not the most optimised of console games, but a good start. Performance mode on Pro still runs at native 1080p, and while frame generation is bafflingly used elsewhere, the Prologue stage does not use it. And as we're running unlocked effectively, we can compare our PC GPUs at the same settings to the Pro. Well, I say the same settings. We've got horsepower to spare, meaning that I can use DLSS performance mode upscaling to 4K on the 5060 Ti, while I'm using the OptiScaler mod on the 9060 XT to force on FSR 4 performance mode. Same internal resolution as Pro then, but with the upscaling overhead on top. Even so, 5% faster on 9060 XT versus Pro rising to 27 points clear on 5060 Ti. One might imagine that DLSS overhead is lower than FSR 4 here. Oh, and another change in this comparison. Uh, the Pro version mysteriously uses low quality textures. I bumped that onto high when testing the 9060 XT and 5060 Ti. More Pro comparisons? Well, here in Forza Horizon 5, we're capped at 60 FPS on the console. This version of the game has a 60 FPS performance mode that takes the existing base console configuration and spruces up environment settings, which I've matched here. If it's not a complete match, it's very, very close. We can't see the full power of the Pro here with that V-Sync cap, but both 9060 XT and 5060 Ti average at over 70 FPS, with a 2.7% lead for the 5060 Ti over 9060 XT. Native 4K on a so-called budget card. Well, this is a game built for 4K output on consoles, so it's no surprise to see today's mainstream GPUs able to do the same. Let's look at Alan Wake 2 next. We'll begin with a comparison to PS5 Pro's performance mode. This upscales from 864p to 4K using FSR 2, with quality settings equivalent to the base console's quality mode, which is essentially PC's medium. This is easy to replicate then, and as the Pro is mostly under 60 frames per second, we are finding the limits of the GPU. 9060 XT, 13% faster than Pro, 5060 Ti is 10% ahead. So certainly in rasterization terms, um, these cards are very close to what Sony's $700 console is doing. But what about ray tracing? Alan Wake 2. Next up, we're going to be taking a look at the quality mode, uh, capped to 30 frames per second. Now, here's the problem. The RT setting on PS5 Pro is effectively lower than PC's low. Even so, I thought I'd give it a go. 4K output resolution using FSR2 balance mode, effectively 1270p internal then. As it is capped at 30, we aren't seeing the Pro's full power. But if we freeze frame here, we're dipping beneath 30 FPS on the console. So we have found Pro limits. You'll see that both of our PC alternatives struggle. We need that lower than low RT setup to get a true measure of how close we can get to the console experience. Even so, I think we've proven out that we're basically in the ballpark of PS5 Pro GPU performance across the board. And with the 9060 XT, that performance won't dwindle that much if you're slotting the card into a PCIe Gen 3 based PC. For $350, that's a very good deal, even if the days of stratospherically good Gen on Gen GPU performance increases in the mainstream market are long gone. So in summary, here's how I feel about the 9060 XT kind of slots into a market defined by three NVIDIA GPUs, only one of which has enough memory, in my opinion. Well, based on my tests, you're getting the lion's share of 5060 Ti 16GB performance while being cheaper than the 8GB model, assuming MSRP is real, of course. Um, RT performance not as strong as 5060 Ti overall, but by and large, NVIDIA's performance isn't in line uh, with its higher price. 9060 XT clearly offers better value. What Nvidia does have is far, far superior support for upscaling and Radeon users shouldn't have to install mods to get FSR 4 running on more games. At the very least, FSR 4 needs to hit FSR 2 levels of adoption. 
FameGen support is also disappointing right now on the AMD side, and while its effectiveness lessens on budget level cards, frame generation, multi frame generation, it does have utility, especially when there are so many high refresh rate monitors on the market right now. I mean, this is Cyberpunk 2077 1440p display output, full RT overdrive, running on the RTX 5060 Ti. Frame rates well north of 100 frames per second. Pretty decent high refresh rate experience, actually. The only slight downer being that latency is a bit on the high side, but perfectly fine, actually, when using a controller. And I think it would be remiss of me not to point out that as good as the 9060 XT is, sometimes those NVIDIA features just come together and produce something like this. Path traced Cyberpunk 2077 on a 60 class card. That is pretty special. But it doesn't suddenly make the value problems facing the 5060 Ti go away, right? So it's a tricky one, but Nvidia's problem does diminish if it gives the Ti model the price point it actually deserves. The 16 gigabyte model shouldn't be more than $400 in my opinion, max. And even without the arrival of 9060 XT, the 5070 offers proportionately more value than that 16 gig 5060 Ti. That's not what budget gaming is all about. I've said it many times, but price versus performance should improve as you move down the stack into the mainstream sector, not get worse.